welcome back to another episode of the Seattle Sports Show. I'm your host, Mikey. And it has been a few weeks since I was able to sit down and record an episode. I actually have a little short window of time today to be able to do it, so I thought I better sit down and record an episode because it's been a few weeks. I've obviously still been doing the Seattle post-game shows, but a regular episode here we have not done in a few weeks, and there's a lot of stuff to catch up on. So, uh, you know, each week I planned on going into a lot of things in detail, but because we are a few weeks behind, I'm just going to kind of like, kind of, uh, do a quick rundown of what we got going on uh, throughout Seattle sports because uh, there's been a lot in the last few weeks. Uh, first up, we're just going to run through order, so let's let's get to our Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> All right, and with our Seahawks, uh, since the last time recorded, we made a trade for Giants defensive lineman Leonard Williams. We gave up a 2024 second round pick and a 2025 fifth round pick. And then later that week, we lost big to the Ravens. We already did that post game show, but you know, I never got a chance to talk about that Leonard Williams uh, trade. Overall, I think it was a good trade. Uh, did it make an impact uh, against the Ravens? Obviously not. Uh, watching the game and watching the All-22, I think Leonard Williams was one of the uh, <laughs> better players <laughs> in that game. So hopefully that means when the whole team is running good together, uh, he will still... You know, or he will shine even more, and uh, it'll make our uh, trade look good. Because overall, I do think it is a good trade. Um, you know, he still got years of production ahead of him. Uh, I, as long as this season goes well, I think we will offer him an extension because he's exactly what the Seahawks need. Um, you know, everybody would uh, love um, if we got a defensive tackle that had, uh, you know, top 10 ability in the draft this year, right? That was the the idea of everybody wanting uh, Jalen Carter, it, myself included, was like, okay, this guy looks like he could be a top 10 uh, defensive tackle in the NFL. Well, we just got one in a trade of a second round and a fifth round pick. Uh, so I think that's a great trade. I mean, unless he just suddenly drops off, uh, then, you know, you can look back and go, okay, well, I guess that didn't work out, but I think the thought process is there. You get, and, uh, you, you only gave up a second round pick for a guy who was a number six overall pick and who has played like it throughout his career. So you already know this is a proven top 10 defensive tackle in the NFL. And again, because of the position he plays, it's not uh it's not one that uh just like suddenly drops off at the age of 30. You're 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 talking about a guy who plays a position who could be playing years from now still 34, 35, 36 and still be a very good productive player. Will he remain top 10 throughout all those years? Probably not, but he should still do very well throughout those years. So um, I like the way Seahawks handle their business. They make these type of trades most of the time. Okay, they've made uh, mistakes with, you know, big trades like this in the past. But most of the time, they trade for a player, let them play some games while they're here before offering them an extension to see if they're going to work out. Uh, so I expect that's what they're going to do with Leonard Williams here. He's obviously going to be a free agent at the end of the season. But I don't think they would have given up a second and a fifth um, if they didn't think they were going to be able to re-sign him uh, in the future. And, uh, I mean, the reason why it was a second, I mean, I, I know the other talk was like, well, um, you know, the the commanders traded away uh, Montez Sweat, and uh, they also traded away uh, Chase Young. 
Sasuke. I, I believe Sweat got a second, but Chase Young only cost uh, a third round pick to trade for. Well, the Giants covered uh, Leonard Williams' salary cap for this year. So that's why you you give up the second round pick. Uh, I imagine uh, if they didn't uh, cover the rest of his salary cap, that, uh, you know, it probably maybe only would have cost a third as well, but also Seahawks wouldn't have even been able to make that trade because it wouldn't have fit within the salary cap. So uh, that's that's the trade-off there. And uh, remember, we do have a third-round pick coming from Denver as well. Uh, so right now, the way things stand, okay, I mean, we, we're only halfway through the season, so anything could happen. We could lose the rest of the games, and we could end up with uh, a high you know, a higher pick in the round. But the way things stand right now, we would be picking towards the end of the second round. So, uh, you know, a, a pick towards the end of the second round and a pick that is looking like it's going to be towards, you know, it's going to be in the first half of the third round. The value there, it's not that big of a difference. So I think value-wise, that's a great trade. You're talking about trading away a pick at the end of the second round for a top 10 defensive tackle, defensive lineman, really, because Leonard Williams, he can really line up uh, at all positions across the line. And you're talking about, uh, you know, just the type of body that this team needed uh, to really, uh, you know, bolster the the run defense and uh, pass rush as well. Leonard Williams is a great pass rusher from the inside. Okay, and again, I know it didn't work out for <laughs> for us against the Ravens in week one. Uh, like I said, sometimes there's some games you just throw out the window, and, and that's when we have to throw out the window because that was just a beatdown. And uh, look across the NFL every year, good teams get beat down by good teams every year and sometimes good teams get beat down by bad teams you know uh it happens <laughs> it's the nfl um you know all, all the teams have uh you know at least some talent on them and that's why they say any given sunday all right uh so overall good trade a couple of games coming up here um we got we got the commanders at home this sunday they're looking not as much of a threat as we originally thought we thought like this we thought there was going to be like a um eight game stretch here where it was going to be really really tough um thankfully uh for us they traded away they're two best defensive linemen, so hopefully that will help uh, a lot of things. Uh, we just got, you know, our offensive linemen for the first time against the Ravens. We had four of the five starters playing, uh, and uh, it did not look good. But uh, hopefully, heading into week two with that many starters on the offensive line, it will help. Uh, the, I mean, their chemistry will start coming around in this one, and uh, a team that is looking like their defensive line is not going to be as much of a threat. Hopefully that's going to help the offensive line get right in uh, blocking both the pass uh, blocking and the rush blocking and give that offensive line some uh, confidence that they uh, can work well together to, um, you know, to get this team going because the team's not going to go if the offensive line uh, doesn't go right. The offensive line is going to have to, uh, run block better and uh pass block better way more than what they did against the ravens again though i think that was just a game even up for the offensive line you throw it out because you saw what our offensive line would do with three or four backups in the game sometimes throughout this season and they did much better than uh what they did against the ravens so it, that, that is just what it was you know it just it was just a bad game Okay, um, yeah, I mean, with the with the uh, 
game against the Commanders. Uh, I think this is, uh, again, should be a good matchup for us to be able to win uh, with all the defensive backs that we have that are so good, um, all the athleticism that we have uh, on this team on defense, we should be able to slow the Commanders down. Uh, we should be able to get to uh, Sam Howell. We should be able to make Sam Howell make some mistakes. So, uh, I mean, this is almost kind of like it ends up looking like it will be a good game for us to have after such uh, a beatdown. This would be a, a good matchup for us to hopefully uh, get the get the ship right. And uh, I, I recently had a friend say to me that he likes teams that have an identity because we were just talking about types of teams that we like. And, of course, you want your... Um, Every team you want uh, to have an identity. Their their goal is to have an identity, right? And the Seahawks, which watching them throughout this year, I don't know what that identity is. Uh, we we could say we know what the identity should be. It should be the run game. It should be, uh, you, it should be using the athleticism that their skill uh, players have, uh, and the the play calling just doesn't seem to be going that way offensively. Uh, you know, uh, 13 combined rushes between uh, Walker and Charbonnet in the last game, not good enough. Uh, the game before that, even, uh, I, I can't remember how many rushes we had, but not enough. Uh, and with the, the, just watching the all 22 of the last games, I mean, I, I don't know why, uh, but there seems to be just such predictability in the play calling uh, on, on passing downs where you have, uh, you're constantly seeing three receivers run deep routes and then you're, you're watching tight ends and running backs go to the flat and nobody, absolutely nobody on any play is going over the middle across the field uh, and putting any pressure on the middle of the field uh, against any defense that we go against, which makes absolutely no sense. We have three good tight ends. We have a Jake Bobo. We have a uh, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, y you have a DK Metcalf who can catch and run after the ball. You give th throw him a slant and uh, watch what he does. You know, <laughs> against uh, you know a smaller corner trying to tackle him. I mean, come on let's let's use the athletes that we have in more creative ways uh i just need to see um you know something out of this offensive play calling i just just going back and watching the tape of all these games i'm getting like sick of watching all these plays where the receivers just go deep downfield deep downfield deep downfield and it's like okay well they're running a post they're 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 streaking okay well i mean you can easily have two defenders defend that uh, without much effort. You have the defender that's, you know, playing man on that receiver, plus you're going to have the safety over the top uh, on both sides of the field. I mean, easy to defend, especially if you're running the same route uh, almost every passing play. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, we, we need to see them establish what their identity is. And to me, for the running game, if K-9 is going to be your main running back, I mean, stop making the guy run up the middle. He can't do it. We know it. I mean, he couldn't do it last year. He looks horrible trying to run up the middle this year. Do some more stretch plays. Do some more toss plays to the outside. Get this guy running on the outside of the guards and outside of the tackles. Like, don't send him up the middle. It's not going to work. Uh, he just, you know, it's just, that's not his style. Um, so, so don't make him do it <laughs> and, and take advantage of his unique skills of that, you know, like crazy breakout speed, uh, that he has if you get him in the open field. And so you need to run more plays that get him the possibility of hitting open field. All right. Uh, that's your Seahawks. Let's go ahead and move on to our next team. Like I said, we got to quickly run through this. Um, all right. Yeah, quickly running through this so that we can get caught up 
on everything uh, the Mariners. Uh, lots of things to talk about them. The offseason has officially started. Uh, before we talk about the offseason, though, Nelson Cruz announced his retirement. So uh, congratulations to Nelson Cruz on such a good career. And the years he spent here in Seattle were, uh, you know, they were fun for sure. So um, congratulations to him on a great career. Now, uh, for the Mariners, uh, you know, it's also it's off season, So it's award season. And we're talking about Gold Glove. Can you believe that J.B. Crawford... A. Eugenio Suarez and Cal Raleigh were all not even nominated for a gold glove. Makes no sense. Uh, Julio Rodriguez was nominated and then he didn't get it. Didn't make any sense there either. I don't even remember who it was that they went with at, um, for the gold glove at center. But uh, I just remember seeing like uh, media, uh, even national media being like, okay, well, why didn't Julio get it? Didn't make any sense. Silver Sugger, a finalist, went to uh, Julio Cal JP. And Julio uh, was awarded the Silver Slugger uh, Award. So two in a row for him. One of just a handful of uh, uh, Mariners with multiple Silver Slugger Awards now. And he's got them two years in a row in his first two years. So, uh, you know. We'd like to see that keep going uh, for the rest of uh, his uh, what are 12 or 13 years that he has <laughs> on his contract with the Mariners. Um, again, now it's off season, So uh, I know we uh, traded for right-handed pitcher, reliever, Cole, uh, Cody Bolton from the Pittsburgh Pirates for cash. Uh, we traded minor league. Uh, catchers uh, swapped minor league catchers with uh, another team. Nothing, nothing big going on so far. But there's a lot of talk about trade, like big trades that the Mariners would be in on. So these are the teams that the Mariners are expect, or the players that the Mariners are expected to be in on this off season. Outfielder Juan Soto of the San Diego, San Diego Padres. Again, that would be a huge one. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about how, again, this would be his contract year, and because of his agent, he's definitely going to free agency. He's not going to, um, you know, go somewhere for one year and sign an extension without getting to free agency because he's going to be, uh, you know, they're, they're going to want a chance to test the market and just see how much he really is going to be able to get. So if you trade for Juan Soto, maybe it doesn't cost that much because it really is, you know for sure, it's only one year guaranteed and you don't know after that. So um, maybe you're able to get less than you normally would. I mean, you have to give up less than you normally would for him, but uh, you know, you're taking that risk. And again, this front office is going to need to take risks this season because you're risking uh, your core players like uh, 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 Cal Raleigh, uh, J.P. Crawford, um, and others who feel like uh, you know you need to go out and get better talent around them. Uh, you're risking them. Uh, being so upset that when their time comes that they don't want to st stick around here either. And then, and then not only did you not go and get talent, then you lost the talent you had here because you didn't, uh, they feel like you didn't manage the team. Right. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta take some risks. Uh, you obviously don't want to like give up everything for a Juan Soto who's only going to be here for one year guaranteed, but you're, you're going to have to be willing to give up something. Um, uh, the the other name that we're hearing, Yandy Diaz, first base of Tampa Bay. Uh, again, uh, Jerry Depoto. Um, uh, they were at the GM meetings uh, this last week, uh, which I heard got <laughs> uh, canceled midway through because I guess there was like some sort of stomach bug going around there, and everybody was getting diarrhea. So. Uh, you know, we're not going to hear any more news about the GM meetings. But st stuff that did come out was that, um, you know, Jerry Depoto said that they are looking to uh, increase contact and lessen strikeouts in their lineup. We obviously know that the uh, Mariners did not extend a qualifying offer to um, 
Teoscar Hernandez, and that means he they feel like he probably was going to accept. Uh, maybe his market's not going to be that good out there, and they didn't want to spend twenty million dollars on him for one year and have the same production that he had. They're trying to improve. They're trying to improve the production out of that position. Uh, and lessen the strikeouts in the lineup. Uh, somebody like Yandy Diaz, he plays first base, but he is somebody who would provide that, right? He's somebody who uh, get has more contact and better average and less strikeouts than uh, what you what we were seeing from uh, Teoscar. Uh, the other name, first baseman as well. So kind of interesting that we were hearing. Uh, a lot of first basemen involved um, in, in talks with the Mariners. Pete Alonso of the New York Mets. Uh, we all know the the power that Pete Alonso has, and uh, you know, yeah, why would you not want that? But again, also a player who is uh, going to be heading into free agency. So, and I haven't heard what kind of. Um, you know, willingness they would have to be able to sign a contract during the year so that you could sign them going forward and you're not just giving up stuff, uh, you know, you're not just giving up your, you know, other talent for a single year of a player. Uh, I don't know, you know, what, like I said, I, I don't know what, uh, what Pete Alonso is thinking, you know, is he gonna, if he gets traded, does he want to sign somewhere with another team right away, or is he just is he also going to want to uh, test free agency? We'll have to see. But he is somebody that sure would look good in this lineup, right? Uh, especially um, Julio Rodriguez and Pete Alonso next to each other in the lineup. I, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see if it gets done. Um, you know, I'm not. That's another one, though. Again, it's probably it's probably going to take a lot, right? And for only one year, a guaranteed, uh, that's tough to be giving up uh, a lot of big talent for uh, somebody that you only know you're getting a year of. Again, that's why last year I felt like uh, in the off season it seemed like the Mariners had did a good job to improve the team because they brought what we thought were going to be better players <laughs> into the team, and um, you know didn't give up uh oops and they didn't give up uh uh a lot of talent to to be to get it in right uh so uh you know it seemed like they were going to be good so this this year i feel like they need to go after some of these bigger names and not just middle of the market uh players that you feel like oh well they should be solid like I, I want them to go after some players that we know uh you know are potential all-star type players uh now there's uh rumors that the blue jays are interested in a eugenio suarez that they would want to trade for him uh I don't know why you'd want to get rid of uh, Suarez other than, again, he is a player that strike out, uh, strikes out a lot, So, and they are trying to get rid of that in the lineup. So, um, you know, his defense was so good last year. Maybe that makes up for it. And, again, he's one of those players that I think is really good in the clubhouse. So if you're not getting something in return for him, that's like another player that uh, the core players are, on this team are going to be upset about if you trade him away and they don't feel like what you get back for him is enough of a return. They're going to say, hey, why did you get rid of a guy who's one of the better uh, uh, third baseman as a defender in the league and you know a great guy in the clubhouse and you didn't get nothing back. So uh, if the Blue Jays are interested in him, like, we need to get something back from them uh, that is going to make it seem worth it uh, to the rest of the team. And we'll see if they can get that done. Uh, let's keep running through here. Let's talk some Kraken. And oh boy, oh boy. Uh, my goodness, the Kraken, they're just not good, are they? <laughs> Uh, they are not good this year. Um, we were talking, uh, they're five and six. Um, they're 
uh, let's see here. Yeah, five wins, six losses, uh, three overtime losses. They're they're not good. Uh, we're we're looking at thirteen points in the standings. That gets us fifth place in the Pacific Division. Okay, we're six points behind third place right now. I mean, we're only fourteen games into the season, so we still have like what sixty eight games left to go. So there's a long season ahead of us. But just watching the team. I'm just wondering, can they even, you know, can they turn this around? I don't know. W- watching last night's game uh, against um, Colorado, we won 4-3, to three, and Manny Benier scored his first goal of the year. Uh, and he seemed very relieved to finally get a goal. And that's one of the players, you know, it's only his second year, but we're expecting him to be a star for the Kraken uh, in years to come. So, um, took him a while to get started, but hopefully that's a sign that he's going to get it going, uh, because we need somebody on this team to do something. Uh, somebody just recently started, uh, we, we got a new hire at my work and, uh, I found out she was a big storm fan. And so we were talking about the storm a little bit. And even though they were, had a horrible record this year, they were at least fun to watch. Uh, okay, right. Uh, because they have they have they had a couple of players who are star players uh, that you know at least made it entertaining to watch them, even if the team ended up losing the game. Right now, the Kraken they don't have anybody playing like a star. Like I said, uh, Matty Beniers, your your rookie of the year, your uh, now going forward the guy that you're expecting to be. Uh, one of the stars on the team is, has not looked good this year. So, and they don't have any other stars. They don't have any, you know, like offensive uh, firepower uh, guys on this team. So they've just not looked fun to watch. I mean, and then again, in the games where they do score goals, uh, maybe it's that the offense is pressing so much to get a goal and score that uh, they're getting easily beat on the transition to get back on defense. And then uh, the goalies, Joey Decord and uh, uh, Grubauer, they are, to me, when I watch them, they're playing really good, and they're just not being rewarded for it because we're not scoring any goals. And then uh, on transition, they end up uh, having to go, you know, like – it's a two-on-one situation and it's making it hard for them to stop that many goals, right? They, they, you can't ask them to stop that many goals in, in those type of situations. So just overall, it hasn't even been fun to watch because you're going, okay, well, are we going to score? Uh, it feels like not. And then uh, it feels like every time uh, we start getting close to getting a goal, we miss the shot, and then we're on a uh, we're behind on the transition, and then the, they're going to get a uh, an, an easy goal. So, Kraken have a lot to to work on. At least, I mean, at the beginning of the season, we weren't scoring goals like at all. At least we're starting to score goals now. So I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say it's totally a good thing because, uh, it seems like the, the, the style that they're playing is just too aggressive. So, uh, it, it's biting them back on, on, on the defensive end. So they got to figure it out again. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm still technically a new fan to hockey, right? I'm like, uh, you know, like I said, I had to watch a little bit when I was a kid and I only started watching regularly uh, now when the, the, the Kraken came here. So I, I, you know, I don't have like expert eyes that I can tell you what's going on. I just know uh, as a casual fan, I see uh, a lot of standing around on the offensive end where it looks like we're not getting much done. And then uh, we're getting beat easily uh, on the transition and just giving up easy goals. Okay, uh, we just mentioned the storm, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit storm. Okay, and it's been so long that I don't actually remember the last thing that we mentioned about the storm. So I figure 
uh, if I mentioned this in the last episode that, you know, regular episode that we did then, uh, and I mentioned again here, hey, well, that's not bad because we're giving uh, props to Jewel Lloyd for making the WNBA first team and giving props to Jordan Horston for making the WNBA all-rookie team. Again, like I said, uh, at least with the, the, the Storm, even though they ended up being one of the worst teams uh, teams record wise in the WNBA last year they at least had players that were fun to watch um that could have you know star performances uh in any given game Jewel Lloyd she would have a star performance in every game it just didn't um work out for the record swarm wise Jordan Horston you could see as a rookie she had games here and there that she looked like she could really be uh, a good player going forward as he magma gore I mean uh She's fun to watch. Uh, and then we just had like uh, a handful of rookies that were all fun uh, to watch them have uh, good games uh, here and there throughout the season. So uh, looking forward to, uh, you know, what the Storm do this off season. Whenever they do the draft lottery, I'll be excited to see if we do end up with the number four pick. Remember, they their chances are that they will get the number four pick in the draft. Um, so we just have to uh, cross our fingers and hope that they end up with something uh, something better in, in the in the lottery. Uh, not that four is bad because again, a lot of good talent coming out of uh, the. Uh, women's college basketball this year so um either way i think we're going to get a good pick okay uh that's the storm let's talk some seattle soccer because seattle soccer has been uh uh it has been sizzling since uh, the last episode Okay, and the Sounders, they are in the middle of a playoff round right now. They are going up against FC Dallas. They have one match. They have won one match, and they have lost one match. The third and final match of this round is tonight, if you're listening to this one, comes out uh, Friday, November, uh, November 10th. Uh, the, uh, the the Sounders have finally, uh, you know, th- throughout the middle of the season, uh, dealing with injuries, players being away on international duty, uh, they were not scoring. But towards the end of the season, they finally got it going, uh, you know, getting all those players back from, again, from injuries, players being gone on international duty. Uh, they, they've, they're, they're finally scoring some goals. Uh, and, and they got hot at the right time. Uh, hopefully they can stay hot tonight. It is the final match of this uh, playoff round. They need to win, <laughs> obviously, so that they can move on. Uh, very exciting, though. I feel like I just feel like they're going to get it done. Uh, you know, I, I didn't get to watch the second match they had, but just watching the first match of this series, it seems like the Sounders uh, are going to be able to figure out uh, Dallas and um, you know and that we'll be moving on to the next round okay I still wish that uh, MLS had a better deal <laughs> to where you didn't have to subscribe to a platform and then subscribe to uh, a service within that platform to be able to watch their games that's just like so ridiculous but um, you know I don't actually even know what channel the this soccer game is on the first game was easy to watch because uh it was uh they actually put it on uh fs1 and uh you know so it was easy to watch it other than that you know i'm not going to pay that much extra (laughs) to to uh just to be able to watch one team uh in a league. So I just wish they had a a better deal with Apple there. I mean, for instance, like I said, I'm a wrestling fan and, uh, you know, 
I watch WWE and they have a streaming deal with Peacock, right? And you don't pay any extra to watch the WWE on there. It's just it's just on that service already. Uh, so it just makes no sense to me that the sound or the MLS is on Apple TV, but then a separate service that you got to pay for on Apple TV. Ugh, just so annoying. E- either way, if it's not on TV tonight, I will be listening to it on the radio and cheering on our Sounders to hopefully uh, get a win and move on to the next round in the playoffs. And uh, let's go ahead and talk the OL Rain now. <laughs> And the OL Reign, they are in the championship ra- championship match on Saturday, November 11th. So nothing for them to move on to from this last match here. They're either going to be champions or they're going to be coming home uh, empty-handed. Hopefully they can uh, come home champions. It would be, what an epic story would be that uh, in um, Megan Rapinoe's last year, uh, her retirement year that uh, the the OL Reign uh, finally uh, win an NWSL championship uh, with her. And I know there was talks as well uh, of Megan uh, Rapino uh, possibly being a part of an ownership group uh, to buy uh, the OL Reign, uh, who went up for sale back in April. So how epic would it be if it's her retirement year uh, you know, she had her quote unquote last home game that everybody came and celebrated and it was a record setting, uh, game for attendance and for, uh, live viewing on television. Then, uh, they ended up getting another home game to, because they made the playoffs, they win that game and then they get, they get to go to the championship match. Uh, if, if they win, Megan Rapino gets a win in her retirement year and then uh, is part of the ownership group that uh, buys the rain the very next year. That would be amazing. Um, again, uh, you know, I, I I just feel like this is another team that got hot at the right moment. Again, uh, we know that Rose Lavelle. I mean, she was uh, injured through a good portion of the year and then she was on international duty right and then uh we all know how that went for the women's national team uh then she, uh she got back and was hurt again but then uh she has returned and has looked great ever since uh so we're going into this championship match um you know with full power it seems like and so that makes me think that we just have a great chance to win the championship and uh, be celebrating uh, a uh, NWSL championship this weekend. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, a holiday weekend uh, this weekend, so I actually have the day off. So I definitely will be watching this match and uh, hoping uh, that we bring the championship home. So make sure you're tuning into that. Again, that is going to be uh, uh, Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock. Again, for them, uh, it should be on TV somewhere. Uh, But they also are on Paramount. Plus, right? So if you have Paramount, uh, you know, thankfully for <laughs> us, you know, uh, you know, on Paramount Plus, whatever you're you're on there, it doesn't cost you extra to get the other services. So you'll be able to watch the the their sports programs uh, without paying extra. Okay, so it'll be on there, and I think that's CBS, right? So uh, if you're looking for the game it might be on one of the cbs channels Uh, but be on the lookout for that saturday five o'clock ol rain in the championship let's go all right and like i said uh, i just want to do a quick um you know catch up here because uh you know it's been so long uh and then hopefully 
uh, you know, going forward here, I, I got some time uh, in the schedule that's going to help me uh, make sure I can do the episodes weekly so that we can go into some more detail about some of these trade rumors, trades that actually happen, um, go into the details of what the teams are uh, looking like. Um, but for now, uh, this is a nice, easy little catch-up episode. I obviously didn't mention the Sea Dragons. They still got nothing going on with their offseason. So um, that's that's going to be uh, the episode. Uh, you know, and then uh, I just love to hear your feedback on any of these teams. How excited are you for Seattle soccer right now? Both teams being in the playoffs and, uh, you know, with the OL Reign going for the championship. Uh, you know, if you are a Seahawks fan, uh, you know, how are you feeling about this team? Do you think they have an identity? Uh, and what is it? And, uh, you know, are they, you know, the the identity that they are attempting, do you think it's the identity that they should uh, be going for? Again, because for me, um, it, it, it doesn't quite feel like they know what their identity is and Shane Waldron doesn't know what the identity of the uh, offense is. Um, let's see here. Uh, you know, if you're a Mariners fan, how excited are you for this offseason? I mean, th to me, every sport offseason I love, uh, you know, hope springs eternal. And I just get excited every offseason for every sport, basically, and just the possibilities uh, of what could happen. Uh, Kraken fans, uh, how are you feeling? Again, I'm not a hockey expert at all. It's probably the sport, uh, you know, that I'm, that I'm watching that I know the least about or that I'm the least knowledgeable in. I mean, to me, uh, the team just looks bad. And that's, that's as much as my eyes know that this team does not look like <laughs> a good team right now. Um, so if you are a fan who's been a hockey fan for years, let me know. Am I just wrong? Is there something there? Are they close to accomplishing something? Or, uh, you know, again, if you're an expert and you say, yeah, Mike, this team sucks and uh, they're going to suck uh, unless they make these changes, I, I, let me know. I want to know what, what, they, what you think they need to do to turn this thing around. All right, and uh, that is going to be the episode. Please, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit subscribe. If you're uh, listening uh, to the podcast version, please uh, hit the follow or subscribe, whatever platform you're listening on. It really helps the show out. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you so much for listening. So uh, this has been the Seattle Sports Show where we watch legends awaken and breathe fire. So take cover because with a sea of sound, you will see us rise to reign supreme and win forever.